authorities have just come out and lifted that tsunami warning for that east coast so they can now breathe a sigh of relief. We had 30 centimetre swells this morning so there was activity out there. It comes after a 7.1 magnitude quake on the east coast of New Zealand. Oh, you never want to see scenes like this playing out. This was actually heavy rain that rocked parts of Austria on Sunday. Mudslides in the village called a Fritzum Sea. Now, the mudslides damaged dozens of homes, as you saw, just covered entire sections of the town. The mayor described the situation saying that literally half the city is under mud. That now, yesterday, fish and wildlife officers were patrolling this area. They were able to give us a closer look at the situation and how people that live right next to the Anclote River here have been impacted. Many, as we mentioned, forced out of their homes. Some left, some haven't. The only way in and out for many of them is by boat, water chest deep in some places. Uh, we saw families struggling with their kids to get around and families swimming in the filthy, flooded streets. Officers, they say they can't control what people do, but want to be ready if anything happens. Flash flooding rocked Greece on Wednesday, causing four deaths with one person still missing. As you can see, the damage is very extensive. Seven communities in the southern Peloponnese region were cut off by flooding. And you're seeing the images just as we are. I mean, cars piled on top of each other due to the flash floods. The water inundated hundreds upon hundreds of homes and businesses in the area. And rescue crews said they received more than a thousand distress calls and had to rescue more than 70 people. The mayor of one community, Kalamata, said he had never seen anything like it. The aftermath of devastating mudslides in Guatemala. Emergency workers and local residents dig for survivors after nine people were killed. The night before, the bodies of the victims were recovered. The concrete houses with their corrugated iron roofs in this poor neighborhood were turned to rubble. Emilio Vega lost his wife in the mudslide, and his son is still missing. Northwestern Tanzania, uh, where this earthquake took place, it was magnitude 5.9. Locally, it occurred in the afternoon on Saturday, and we're getting some of the vi first visuals in from uh, from that area to CNN. 11 confirmed fatalities so far. We also have at least 200 uh, injuries that have been reported. But remember, it's very difficult to get information, let alone footage, out of this very remote part of Africa, um, East Africa, I should say. Uh, the depth was 10 kilometers, and again, the magnitude was 5.9. It was just on the shores of Lake Victoria. The World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, warned that the consequences of warming at this rate could soon spell disaster. They say 2016 will be the hottest year since records began 137 years ago and are urging world leaders to implement the Paris Agreement as soon as possible.
Thank you. Dozens of people have been killed in Indonesia after flash floods and landslides hit the cities of Garut and Sumedang in West Java province. Rivers overflowed and floodwaters reached up to two meters after just three hours of rainfall. Friends and relatives of people missing in the floods gather at this hospital. They search a board for names of their loved ones. Many families at this shelter reported several people missing following the torrential rain and floods. Rescuers continued searching for survivors after hundreds of homes were damaged, forcing many to evacuate. Flash floods and landslides are common in Indonesia at this time of year. They are usually caused by seasonal heavy rain. The area is expecting wet weather until early next year, peaking in January. Weather alert, there's severe flooding that right now is slamming the Midwest. And there's a dangerous situation that could get worse today, we're told. Thousands of people now being evacuated from their homes in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Minnesota and Wisconsin could also see devastating floods. Matt Finn is live in our Chicago bureau with an update on all this. Hi, Matt. Eric, right now, thousands of Iowans have packed their belongings and evacuated and can only hope that their home is spared by the rising flood water. 13 of Iowa's 99 counties under a state of emergency right now. Recent heavy rains causing the Cedar River and streams to engulf communities. The worst of the flooding near Cedar Rapids, where 5,000 homes are under evacuation right now. The Cedar River now expected to crest at 23 feet tomorrow morning. That's seven feet above the major major flood stage and would be the second highest crest in the city's history. Many Iowans say they're getting good at prepping for flooding, but unfortunately, some have already lost the battle to Mother Nature. Well, people in southeastern China are still coping with the aftermath of Super Typhoon Maranti. Another huge storm is barreling down on them. Typhoon Maggie is now less than 1,000 kilometers off the coast of the southeastern city of Xiamen. It's expected to sweep through Taiwan Island on Tuesday before making landfall on China's southeastern coast on Wednesday. Local authorities in Fujian province are evacuating residents from coastal areas and ordering all fishing vessels to stay in harbors. Railway authorities canceled nearly 80 train services along the coast for Tuesday and Wednesday. A powerful typhoon has laid waste to northeastern Taiwan. At least four people have died and 316 have been injured. Almost three million homes have been left without electricity in Yilan province. Thousands of people have been evacuated from their homes and are being housed in temporary shelters. Wildfire burning out of control in the mountains south of San Jose, California, forcing hundreds of people from their homes. As crews work to battle them from above, right now the fire is only about 10 percent contained. It's like a furnace when you step outside in much of California, and whether you're along the coastline or you're inland. This fire began on Monday when it was 97 degree heat in the hills above Santa Cruz. That's just, just south of San Jose, just south of the Silicon Valley. Uh, that's where this fire is burning. It's called the Loma Fire. More than 3,000 acres. There are 500 firefighters on it. There's no cause of yet. You mentioned 10% contained, but it's very difficult terrain to fight this in. Everything's very dry here in California. This drought just doesn't want to seem to end. Uh, we know there have been a number of homes and buildings destroyed. Now, the, while the fire uh, is obviously very serious business, people did not really want to evacuate in many cases. A lot of the people down here are in more rural areas. Uh, they like to live out in that area and they want to try to save their homes, but firefighters warn about these brutal fire conditions everybody's facing. The entire state of South Australia is tonight without power after a devastating storm. Thousands of homes have been plunged into darkness. All traffic lights are down. Public transport is at a standstill and hundreds of passengers are stranded at Adelaide Airport. Fierce storms trigger a statewide power outage. South Australia tonight in the dark. The widespread blackout causing mayhem across the city. Passengers are stranded at the airport, including Perth woman Amy Churak. Public transport also at a standstill. Train lines closed, all traffic lights out, cars jammed for kilometres. Hospital staff forced to work under torchlight as backup generators power critical machines. The severe storm brought down trees, some crashing onto houses. Locals desperate to avoid a repeat of the devastating scenes a fortnight ago.
swept through the mid-Atlantic on Thursday, causing major flooding in several states from North Carolina to Delaware. In Shenandoah County, Virginia, one man was killed by a falling tree where rain totaled about eight inches and winds were gusting around 30 miles per hour at the time of the incident. In North Carolina, a road was completely impassable. In Rayford, where rain totaled up to a foot, and that fell in just one day. And the Little River near Fort Bragg Army Base broke a 70-year flood record and is threatening to burst a dam. Schools were closed in Cumberland, Fort Bragg, and Hoke counties. And in Maryland, nearly 200 people were evacuated from a condo complex in Salisbury as water rushed through the Morris Mill Dam. Hurting big time as well. It's been a tough year for New England farmers like Bill Clark. The land he owns and farms in Danvers, Massachusetts, the Clark family has owned since 1728. That's 48 years before our country was a country. And this is what used to be called Salem Village one of the oldest agricultural areas in the country. So with that history as a guide, Bill intimately knows the land off which he makes a living. I hate, I hate to see these things yeah. away, you know? And he knows the weather history there too. I haven't dealt with a drought like this since my father ran the farm back in the 1960s. And we had a five year period back then when it was pretty dry. And at that time he really uh, encouraged me to be aware of how severe the water problems could be. And we've really suffered it this year. Learning from his father, Bill disconnected from the local water supply and has solely relied on several wells for the last five years. But don't think those wells brought a flood of help this year. It hasn't rained since early June at Clark Farm. Lettuce basically got devastated. I had three or four really good fields of lettuce early in the spring. And then starting around early July, they started to dry up really fast. A lot of my friends are in really deep trouble. One of them defaulted on a major loan that he had to farm credit, and he's worried about his farm losing his farm. This extreme dry weather is something that I, we've been worried about with global warming and stuff like that, and it's going to be one of the effects of, of the, the, even a few degrees warmer in the temperature and climate.